Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. Today we begin a new book of the Bible. We come today to Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 1. So get your Bible, open it up to Luke, if you can, and we'll begin in just a minute. Now you can study all of God's Word with me any time that you want to, as much as you want to, using my audio Bible messages at thebibleversebyverse.com. Go there, choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse. All you need to bring is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word to thebibleversebyverse.com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke 1, 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Many Christians have the same spiritual gift from God. But no two Christians use their gift in the exact same way. You, whatever your gift might be, I'll use the example, example of teaching, the gift of teaching. I'm not like any other Bible teacher. And no other Bible teacher is like me. And no other Bible teacher is exactly like anybody else unless they try to mimic them, which is shameful. Because we should all be ourselves. I remember when I first started Scripture verse by verse, I had a real doozy of a pastor at this modern evangelical church. I just, I just started Scripture verse by verse and he tried to discourage me. It's so like 37 years ago. I said, Mike, you know, we don't need any more Bible teachers. We already have Chuck Swindoll. Uh, we already have Charles Stanley. I, what do you want to do that for? Why don't you start a panel discussion group? <laughs> well, that just about turned my stomach at the thought of doing something like that. Yeah, let's, let's have a buzz session, like the Bible studies in his church where everybody shared their ignorance. Sorry, I knew what God was calling me to do, and I knew it was biblical, so I ignored his counsel. And it's so stupid, so what? I don't care if there's a million Bible teachers if God's calling me to teach, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it in a different way because I have a unique pers personality. Everybody does. And we see this in verse 1. Again, I say many Christians have the same spiritual gift from God, but no two Christians use their gift in the exact same way because everybody has different personalities. They all bring something different in the way of personality and experience to the table. And we see that right here in verse 1. Many people wrote books on the life of Jesus Christ. Well, did that stop Luke from doing it? If he would have gone to the church where my pastor was in charge, he might have persuaded, hey, Luke, don't do it. We already got Matthew, Mark, and John. What do you want? Or not John, that was came later. We already have Matthew and Mark. It can't be God's will for you to do it. No. Luke did it because God wanted to use Luke's unique personality and his unique style to write another gospel. The life of Jesus Christ. It's a good thing he did. Luke was totally unlike Peter, which is where Mark got his information for his gospel from. Got it from Peter. It, it could have been called the gospel of Peter. 
Peter was completely opposite of Luke. That's why Mark is completely, not completely opposite, but emphasizes different things. <coughs> Excuse me. Then Luke. Luke was a physician, which is why his gospel is more detailed than any other gospel. Doesn't make it any more point, important. It just makes it different. See? Verse 2. Even as they delivered them unto us, whom from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. See how Luke was? Mark never would have said this because Peter never would have said that. God inspired Luke to do this, which guaranteed that this book would be 100% accurate, 100% accurate, truthful, because it was inspired by God. But part of the process that God the Holy Spirit used was the hard work that Luke put into investigating all the reports about Christ. We see that it is important that we pray hard and work hard, and then God will use us. Luke did not sit back in his easy chair and say, okay, God, I think you want me to write a gospel. I'll sit back here, put my, my head on a pillow and say, okay, inspire me, God. Tell me what to write. No, no, he had to use some elbow grease. He had to work and research, and God inspired him through that process. And that was probably completely different than anybody else as well who wrote any other book in the Bible. But you can't put God in a box and say, well, he always does things this way or that way. Not necessarily, you see. Four, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Luke was a doctor, as I mentioned, he was a physician, and like a good doctor, he paid close attention to detail, and he did in this gospel too. I, I'm not going to say it's my favorite, because whichever gospel that I am studying or teaching is my favorite, because I say it about every, every gospel. Uh, but it's a good one. It's a good one. Now, let's begin in verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abijah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. There were 24,000 priests in Israel back in those days, but only one temple to serve in. So, these priests were divided into 24 groups of 1,000 priests each. And each of these 24 groups would serve at the temple twice a year. Zechariah was just one of those 24,000 priests, and it just happened to be his turn to serve in the tabernacle in Jerusalem. Don't you believe it? God was behind this whole thing, just like God is behind everything that happens in our lives. So look what happened, verse 6. And they were, well, let's read 5 again. There was in the days of Herod, king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the house of Abijah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. They, meaning Zacharias and his wife Elizabeth, they were both very righteous people. They were righteous, not sinless. None of us are, but they were blameless because of their faith in God. Their faith in God caused them to live for God and to offer the proper sacrifices 
when they failed in their living for God. Being blameless simply means that God does not hold our sins against us. That's the best that any of us can hope for. And in Christ, he doesn't hold our sins against us. And the fact that we are in Christ is seen by our righteous lives, our desire to live for him. That was Elizabeth and Zechariah. That's the kind of people they were. Seven, and they had no child because Elizabeth was barren. And, excuse me, and they were both, were now well stricken in years. Now, back then, people assumed that if a married woman did not have children, it was because she had some terrible sin in her life. A sign of God's disapproval. That was, that is, a bad assumption. And it was wrong in the case of Elizabeth and Zechariah both. It is disgusting to me when something bad happens to a Christian and other so-called Christians come along and blame them for it. Well, you must have done something bad or you don't have enough faith or this or that, some other kind of lie of the devil. Eight. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Well, it seemed, it may have seemed, like the luck of the draw that got Zacharias into the holy temple burning incense on this particular day. But it was not the luck of any kind of a draw. God's providence once again was at work, as it always is when it comes to controlling circumstances. Verse 10, And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the time of incense. Priests in the Old Testament period actually had died while serving in the temple, while in the temple doing the work of a priest because they were careless. So the people, whenever the priest went in to do his work, the rest of the people outside the temple prayed that nothing would go wrong. So they were praying while Zacharias was doing his priestly work right here. Verse 11, And then there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. This was no dream. This wasn't even a vision. This was an appearance. A literal angel literally appeared in the flesh, as it were, right next to Zechariah in this temple. It was dark in there, except for the light of those candlesticks. It was dark. He was all alone. And an angel, and he's doing the most holy work imaginable. People have died in the temple for doing things wrong. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, bang, this angel appears. I hate to do this to you, but we're going to have to wait till next time to see what happened. Don't miss it. Make sure you join me, okay? Now, in the meantime, you can study all of God's Word with me anytime that you want to, as much as you want to, using my audio Bible messages at thebibleversebyverse.com. And if you'd like to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, you can be by praying for me and God's Word. Do it right now while you're thinking about it. Do it later if you think about it again, because that's the most important thing that you can do is pray. Well, there is one other thing. When you quit, when you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, you can also go to the front page and click the donate button and prayerfully give us the Lord may lead because that also makes you a part of this ministry. I'd appreciate both of those. And until next time, this is Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.